Okay, okay, okay. Testing, testing, can you hear me? I'm, uh, this is, this is, this is chapter two of part two of my audiobook, my uh, paranormal autobiography. This is part two. This is, follows the other, the other uh, video where I describe how I went through a portal the first time on a dirt bike. I went through a portal. So on this day, four days, sorry, four years after my first trip through the portal, four years later, it would be about 1989, I drove my pickup truck out to Port Mellon for something or other, I don't remember why, but uh, I visited Port Mellon and I, as I drove out of the parking lot uh, onto the highway heading back home, <clears throat> I looked at the bush on the side of the road there and I thought, that's the place where I came out that day after I went through the portal and I, I came out <clears throat> of the bush right there, the side of the road, and I looked right and left and I saw Port, Port Mellon. And that's where I came out on my dirt bike. So I thought, oh, well, I'll go up that road. Maybe I can go all the way home on that road, right? <clears throat> so, so I drove slowly along the road till I got to the place where that road was that I came out of on my dirt bike. I drove to that location very slowly. I'm looking and looking on the right-hand side of the road there. I'm looking... And there I see, again, this vertical, flat wall, which cannot exist. I didn't spend too much time talking about this vertical, flat wall in the previous video, but I will describe it here in greater detail. It's a vertical, flat wall. And you cannot have that in the forest at all. It cannot exist there in the forest. Uh, it had, it was covered with little leaves, these would be little green leaves about one inch by two inch all over the wall, but this can't exist, it's, it's impossible. This is how I know when a paranormal experience is beginning because I see something that cannot exist. So I'm looking at uh, this wall and there's a hole in the bottom of it and I kind of try to look in the hole because it appears to be big enough for my truck to just drive through this hole, right? So I'm looking in the hole, trying to adjust my eyes to the darkness in there, and I'm looking in there and I, I and there seems to be a road in there, so I figure, well, just roll, roll forward in my truck very carefully and just stick the front nose of my truck in this hole, and I'll, then I can look around inside there and see what's in there, right? So I very carefully roll in till my windshield is inside the hole and then I can look up and I can look all around see what's in there and I see a kind of a road going up the hill. It was not steep but it was not a regular road either. It looked like a creek bottom with round rocks on it and I, I examined that carefully because I didn't want to get stuck. So I exa examined that carefully and I thought, yeah, I think I can drive up that creek bottom type road, you know. So I put it in first gear and I slipped out the clutch and I started up this like creek bottom and the trucks bounced up and down on these round rocks and uh, going up and going up and I was making good progress. I wasn't getting stuck. I had bushes on both sides of the, of the truck and they're ticking the mirrors on both sides, right? So it was really narrow, but I had to, I knew I had to keep my forward momentum up. So I put the gas pedal like halfway down. I got a little bit of speed up and I'm bouncing, bouncing up this uh, kind of like a creek bottom, yeah? And, and I, uh, I got up there, maybe went maybe 100, 100 feet or so up this creek bottom and I came to a T. So I put the gas pedal down and I went up onto a regular logging road. Everything looked normal at this point. 
I'm on a, a normal logging road, right? So I thought, well, I'll go uphill. Trying to go back the way I came before, right? I went back, you know, so I thought, well, I'll go back the hill. So I turned left and started <clears throat> driving forward and uh, put on some gas, went first gear up, second gear, put on some gas. So when you're going uphill like that, you want to get some speed up. And so I got some speed up in second gear and I'm coming around a big wide turn, wide bend around and around. And when I get around the, the bend far enough, I can see straight ahead. And I see the road goes way, way up, straight, very steep, up. And up at the top of the road, I can see a light blue bright rectangle. That's the sky. I could see the sky up there, right? And it was, um, it was like a rectangle. It was light blue. It's what you would expect to see, uh, really. It wasn't too unusual uh, because I was just kind of looking up and I was seeing, seeing the sky up there under the canopy. The two sides were the trees on both sides of the road and the bottom of the rectangle was the road, you know? So I thought, well, I can drive up there. So I hammered the gas pedal to the floor because the road was steep and uh, I banged the gas pedal right down hard and started accelerating up this hill, right? Now, as I looked ahead, I could see in front of me that the road suddenly took a turn upwards. So it was, it was already going up and then it took a, like a, a thing like this to a steeper up gradient, right? So I had no choice at that point because I couldn't back down the hill. So I had to go up. So I held that gas pedal down real hard and the motor was roaring at pe torque peak. So I was probably going, I don't know, in second gear, maybe 35 miles an hour or something like that uphill. And I just blasted up that hill as fast as I could go. And uh, as I was, when I hit the bottom of that, of that increase in steepness, the front of the truck bounced up. It, it, it made a loud bang and, and the whole front of the truck bounced up in the air. And I'm hanging on tight, but I got, I had to keep that gas pedal down to the floor. I knew that, that's all, you know, I, that was the main thing. My number one priority is keep that gas pedal to the, door, to the floor. And I'm hanging on to the, to the steering wheel now because I was going uphill so steep that I had to pull myself up on the steering wheel to see where I was going, right? So the motor's roaring and I'm, I'm, I'm going up this hill and I thought, this is weird. You know, there's something weird happening here, but I thought I want to do a chin up on the steering wheel and look over the hood and see the road in front of me. So I did that. I did a chin up on the steering wheel. I looked over the hood. I could not see the road there. I, I couldn't see it. it I, I don't know why, but I could not see the road. I could see the bright blue rectangle up ahead, a few hundred more feet up ahead. I could see the the bright blue rectangle, the sky, but I couldn't see the road right in front of me. But I kept that, I knew I had to keep that gas pedal hammered to the floor. So I did. I held it down and I got up and up and up and I got up to the blue rectangle. I went through it and then everything calmed down and the road curved down flat, you know, and I was up I was up high and, and I was in a clear cut and I could see all around. The sky was blue. It was all very pretty. The noise had subsided. The feeling of nervousness and, and uh, this hectic feeling that I had had while I was going up that hill, that subsided and I felt normal and relaxed again. And I looked around and thought, well, this looks familiar. I've been here before on my dirt bike, right? So. I proceeded along this road and it was just a regular logging road with, you know, uh, potholes and puddles and, and uh, reasonably flat and, and I just kept driving along there and uh, everything seemed normal again 
uh, even though I had been through a portal, <laughs> everything looked kind of normal. I didn't, at that time, I'd, I'd never heard of portals. So I didn't know what the hell was going on. I knew something weird was going on, but I didn't know what it was. But, uh, so anyway, I drove along there, and a little ways along, I came to this brand new concrete bridge over a gully. I had seen that bridge before. When I was up there on my dirt bike, I drove over that same bridge. I thought, hey, I can go home from here. I can drive home from here. So I proceeded over the bridge and along the road, but I found a different road. I didn't find the big road that I had driven on my dirt bike. That, that road was not there at all. Instead, I found um, a narrow, old logging road that went up and down and bumped up and down and this was, uh, this is up on the, um, the uh, Dakota Ridge. Okay, so now I was driving across Dakota Ridge, which is flattish but bumpy, okay. And I'm, I was driving on this old road. So I'm going up and down, I'm going through cross cuts, through creeks, cross cuts, up over rocks and up and down and the trucks bumping and banging and squeaking and uh, but I kept kept rolling along thinking that I was headed home I thought you know so I'm rolling along and um, <clears throat> I drove along there maybe a half a mile or so and uh, the road appeared to keep going I mean you know it looked like I was gonna get somewhere so I um, I saw up ahead, and I roll along like 10 miles an hour or less, pretty slow. But on my right hand side, I could see there was a, a T. So there's another road going off at right angles to the right. So I slowed down and I stopped in this T to look up the road to my right. So I stopped there, and then I turned and looked to my right, and I saw a logging operation. And I was really surprised. I was actually relieved at first because I thought, oh, great, there's some people up here, right? That's good, I thought. But then I thought, I looked away and I thought, now, wait a minute. Those logging machines were not painted yellow. They were all painted black and they were all black. They were smoking and moving. So there was a logging operation going on. <coughs> but the machines were all black. I thought, that can't be. Logging machines cannot be black. It's against the law, right? So <clears throat> I did a, a double take and I looked back again. This time I saw a row of guys standing with their backs to me. They were watching the logging and they were lined up with their backs to me and they're all dressed in work clothes, mostly, uh, mostly green rain gear which is very common here. And, and they were standing in a row, about seven of them, I think. And they were facing the logging operation. They're walking, watching it. And sure enough, the machines were all black. And they were smoking and they were moving. And I thought, this can't be. It's impossible. It's impossible. Now, there was like these seven guys with their backs to me. At the end of the row, there was a guy facing me, <clears throat> and he was bright. I could see him. It was like there was a light shining on him. And this is the middle of the daytime, right? This, this guy appeared to have a light shining on him because he was really bright. His face was particularly bright and smiling. So he had a big smile on his face. He's looking right at me. And then I saw his mouth open. I could see this black hole in his face, open and close, open and close. He was yelling something at the other guys. And I thought, this is getting weirder and weirder every second, every fifth of a second, because these things happen a fifth of a second at a time, pretty much. And um, I looked away again, and then I did a triple take. I looked back again. And the guy on the right, the smiley guy with the bright face, he was there and he was still yelling something. But the seven guys who had had their backs to me, 
had flipped around and we're now facing they're all facing now okay <clears throat> but they didn't look like the smiley guy at all they're all dressed in like tattered work clothes and they're facing me and all their faces were a black smudge like that okay no face just a black smudge like that okay now this scared me that sight what i saw there actually terrified me and i this is a, a really this, the most scared i've ever been on any of my paranormal paranormal experiences this was the greatest fear i ever felt and it, it um most of my paranormal experiences i've not felt fear at all no fear just curiosity but this one actually scared me and I grabbed that steering wheel with my knuckles <laughs> and I grabbed onto that steering wheel. I looked straight ahead and I slowly let that clutch out and rolled forward, okay? I did not want to see this again. It was too damn scary. Goddamn bugs. <clears throat> so I rolled forward slowly and I was clenching the steering wheel in fear and rolling slowly. I drove very, very carefully and slowly forward because I absolutely did not get out. I did not want to get stuck. That was my primary consideration. Don't get stuck. So I proceeded forward, slowly, bouncing up and down over these boulders and rocks and down, down into a, a cross cut and up and through a creek and a puddle and rolling along, rolling along, and I had an intention in my mind, and this is actually very important uh, for understanding how portals work, is that I had a very strong intention in my mind. I had intent, and my intent was to go home. I had a very strong compulsion to go home. This, this, this desire to go home, this intention to go home, filled my mind. So I just kept going forward very, very carefully, driving forward, driving forward, intending to go home. Then there was a transition, and I was suddenly on a different road. In the blink of an eye, I was on a different road. Okay? And that's something that happened over and over again in, in my other trips through the portals, is I would, I would blink my eyes, I would establish a strong intention to go home, I would blink my eyes, and when I opened my eyes, I was on the road I wanted to be on, a road that I recognized that goes right down to my home. Uh, it was a road it's about four miles up the hill from where I live, and I recognize it perfectly well. It's a big, wide logging road. You can go 30 miles an hour on it. It's very safe. And uh, I just went home. That's all I did. I just, I had a very strong intention of going home, and I went home. Okay, and that's how it works. That's how you get back out of a portal. So I'm, I'm um, giving people this warning, you know, if you ever think that maybe you've gone through a portal uh, and you might be having weird experiences or something like that, the way to get back is to establish a very strong intention in yourself, in your consciousness, to go home. Even make a picture of your home in your mind and drive towards it and that's how you get out, out through the portal. Okay, that's how it's done. So now I've described entering the portal, going through it, what I found on the other side, and how I got back home again. And when I say get back home, you see, that's, that's the intent. And you, you, must, you must establish these intents. intents. Now, uh, I didn't make this stuff up myself. Chris Bledsoe had a similar experience, although he was walking, 
for the group of people. And by his description of what happened is they had gone through a portal and then and then they were heading home and they came to a barrier in front of them, <clears throat> which was a big ditch and they couldn't get across it. So they all went blink and then they were suddenly on a different road and they were walking home and they recognized the road and they were headed home. Okay, that's how you get out through a portal. If you find yourself on the other side of a portal, that's how you get back, is you establish a strong intention to go home and blink and you'll be home. That's how it works, okay?